Hi, I'm Ramnivas Ladard, and I'm going to talk about Cloud Foundry uh, and uh, essentially show you how you can deploy your applications to Cloud Foundry, and we'll, we'll walk through a variety of scenarios. But before that, uh, sort of general idea about what Cloud Foundry is. So one of the things that we find is complexity is increasing. It's increasing in terms of um, frameworks and languages, the devices we got to support, new types of devices, uh, data types, and various infrastructure. So all of these things are already making life harder because we not only have to write application and focus on application logic, but also have to worry, uh, worry about making it run on a variety of platforms, making it support a variety of devices. Uh, so what we are really trying to do is simplify some of these aspects. So what we believe is we require a new application platform that will help you simplify your application. So you, as a developer, should focus on your code and not worry about other uh, aspects we talked about. When some, somebody says such, such a thing, it usually means you know, locking into something, uh, something uh, some, some service or framework, and we want to avoid that. We want to keep uh, your choices open. So you should be able to deploy to a variety of cloud uh, services or have even choice of not deploying to cloud uh, application if that's what you choose. So your application should be free from most artifacts, uh, cloud-related artifacts. And you also want to not spend hours and hours deploying to cloud. So deploying to cloud should be nothing too special. So you should be able to take your application and deploy to cloud in a few seconds. And if you want to scale it there, it should be a matter of a few seconds as well. So what we have is we have um, Cloud Foundry, which is first open platform as a service. So we offer variety of clouds, and I'm going to show you two kinds uh, in this webinar. We also support a whole range of industry uh, standard uh, frameworks. We also have variety of infrastructure services. And architecture is very extensible, so you should be able to innovate. So if you want, need an extra different service or want to support a uh, different framework, we are open to that from architecture perspective. On top of that, it's open source under Apache license, so you should be able to take it and uh, uh, tailor it to your needs if that's what you want. So what am I going to do in uh, next 30 minutes? I'm going to skip over these slides and uh, Linda already, uh, Cinda already mentioned about it. So this is the challenge we are currently facing. So we have uh, applications that are complex, you have to deploy it on multiple nodes. There are multiple roles uh, to access parts of application functionality. And connectivity between uh, applications is also get growing to be complex. There are deployment challenges. So what is the model of your application? How to build a VM that meets your need? Network configuration, storage, etc. And all of this must keep running 24-7, 365 because these days you can't afford any, uh, any, any issues with your application running correctly. So what, we, what developers, however, want is they don't want any of those complexity. They simply want to say, let me focus on application, and I should be able to push with a command, or if I want to bind service, it should be another command, and my application basically just works. Also, if I want to scale, then I should be able to support multiple instances very quickly. So this is really Cloud Foundry is all about. We support a wide variety of languages and frameworks, so Spring, Rails, Plain Java, Scala, Ruby Rails, Node.js, and there are a bunch of community contribution as well to support other languages and platforms. We also support a variety of data services, uh, services data service messaging, etc and deployment choices, public cloud, private cloud, and micro cloud. So we'll look at public cloud and micro cloud in this webinar. It's uh, available on GitHub. So if you go to github.com slash cloud foundry, you will get all the source code. 
So let's now focus on to doing some uh, deploying some application. So what I have here is um, Spring Source Tool Suite. So what we have done is we have made um, integration with uh, STS Spring Source Tool Suite such that deploying to cloud is very simple. So let me. I have this already written a contacts application. It's a Spring Roo application, but you could write it in uh, using any language, uh, any other framework. Uh, it's Roo is not a requirement here. Roo simply simplifies creating application. So in this case, I'm using it uh, for that reason. Let me create uh, a Cloud Foundry server. So those who have used STS to deploy or Eclipse to deploy Java applications, you know that you can create servers which effectively are proxy for the real server. So you could have a Tomcat server or TC server. So what you do here is you create a Cloud Foundry server. So let's create a Cloud Foundry server. So you got you see all the variety of choices here. We also have Cloud Foundry as a choice. Next, and it asks me for username and password. So you already signed up for Cloud Foundry, so you should be able to use your username uh, it's email and password. And let me just validate the account just in case uh, if I mistyped anything. It seems it's all right. And I'm going to finish. So now what you see here is a server, Cloud Foundry server, that is bound to a specific instance of cloud. When we go to micro cloud, you will see that we will bind it to different URL. All right, so now I need to take this contacts application and deploy it. It's very simple. All I do is I take this application and drag and drop it here. So now it asks me what is the name of the application, what framework it is using. So there are several choices, Spring, Rails. If you're using Scala Lift, then we support that as well. Or if you are not using any framework, then you simply choose plain Java web. But in this case, it is a Spring framework, so let's go ahead. And I need to choose a URL. So URL has to be, of course, unique. So let me guess that this may be available, webinar. Next, it asks you if I want to bind, create and bind some services to application. I do want to, so let me create a service. So in this case, let's call it contacts DB. And the type of service, I could choose either MySQL or Postgres, but let's just choose MySQL, finish it. I do want it to bind, so it's already checked that this is needs to be bound to this application. Finish it. So what Cloud Foundry is now doing is it's taking the bits here, compile bits here, pushing it to Cloud Foundry, and starting the application. And you can also see that there's a log output here. This is a log output is similar to what you, uh, would, you would have seen if you have, were to deploy to, let's say, Tomcat. The reason is we want that experience of deploying to any server to be more or less uniform. So in this case, the log output that is actually for the application running on cloud is still shown here. So all right, let's go and look at the application. So it is saying it deployed, it started, and it shows all the information about it. So it is deployed under this host, and it's using right now this much CPU, memory, and so on. And it also shows you URL. So I could copy this URL. I could and then go to browser and paste. And I get my application. So if I want to create an application, uh, create a new contact, let's say, uh, nor and last. Not too creative, but I guess that's okay. Save, and I can see contacts and so on. There's nothing really too special about this. Uh, it looks like somebody already created, uh, visited the URL, and so on. That's fine. Uh, this is public URL, so you guys can go and add more information if you want. 
So this is the application. You saw that, you know, I probably in five minutes, I walked you through a scenario where you could take an application, existing application, and this application is unmodified. So in a, I basically run these commands. Let me show you that, those commands. I created a project, I set up its persistence and added a couple of fields and created a, uh, a web, web artifacts. And that's it. I did not have, there are no cloud specific um, code in this application. Let me show you in fact that part as well. So let's say um, it's persistent on XML. It's actually pointing to H2. So because I was initially, I chose to be using um, H2 as, as my uh, persistent store. And also, if you look at application context, database properties, let's say, is the database properties are pointing some local in-memory database. Yet, when I actually bound it to MySQL, we automatically switch to your H2 database connection with for my, one for MySQL, and it just worked. So we want that experience to be as seamless as possible. What I'm going to do next is, I'm going to deploy the same application to MicroCloud Foundry. For that, I can do the same thing. I can create a new server, still a Cloud Foundry server, but let me give a different name, MicroCloud Foundry. Let me take a pause here and talk about what is MicroCloud Foundry. MicroCloud Foundry is a Cloud Foundry instance that you can run on your laptop. So it's a virtual machine that we give you. It's a prepackaged virtual machine that we give that has all the components, including MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, everything, Tomcat, and all that thing that you need. And it's just a virtual machine. So you bring up that virtual machine, and you get this MicroCloud Foundry. And um, this MicroCloud Foundry is bound to some address, in this case it's api.webinar.cloudfound.me, and you, other than that URL, it's everything works as if you are working with the cloud. The idea is, if you're not ready to deploy to public cloud yet, you can start with MicroCloud Foundry. And there are some additional benefits you get, for example, you can do debugging and so on. I will not show you it in this webinar, but in a future webinar we can discuss about those. So all right, let's keep moving. So I have, I'm going to choose a MicroCloud Foundry, uh, which asks me what is the name. When you sign up for MicroCloud, you basically get to do this part, the, the webinar part. You can choose it. So the URL is apiwebinar.cloudfound.me. Let's validate it. It's valid. And finish. Nothing. Any, and nothing much different than what we did for public cloud. So let's now take the same application and deploy it to MicroCloud Foundry. Same questions. Now here, you start to see some differences. When I run application, I have a choice of running in either a run mode, a normal mode, or debug it. If I say debug, then I can set breakpoints, examine data, and typical debugging that you can use. What is interesting about is, we preserve your experience of de developing with local resources, even when you are using cloud. Because ultimately, when you write programs, you do want to debug often, uh, especially in the initial stages. So let's finish this. So now I have MicroCloud Foundry. Actually, I already had deployed it, apparently. Let me deploy it one more time. Or, you know, I'll skip it. You know, basically, I'm going to drag and drop and do exactly the same thing uh, as we did before. So th this is all I had to do to deploy to uh, micro, uh, MicroCloud Foundry. It's the same experience. Nothing changes. And let me just do one more thing. So in this case, actually, I forgot to add a service, and that's okay. We can add it now. So it was using with in-memory database. So if I want to add a service now, I can do it here. 
contacts db and choose a service and this service I want to bind it here so I drag a service provision service to my application let it do the binding so it's adding service and let me restart so this is a good illustration of how you may start with one kind of service deploy your application and then bind another kind of service so if I want let's say I realize that MySQL is not the right service to use here I would rather use Postgres sure take out this service create a new service here and drag that uh, in application services I can visit the URL I could have copy pasted this in browser but that's okay the same experience and I get my application and it behaves the same now you won't be able to add to this one because this is my private URL this is not available publicly all right so that's about deploying spring applications similarly you can do grace applications its experience is unchanged you still create your application drag and drop you can set breakpoints and everything even for the Grails application same experience will stand for Scala as well if you're using Lyft or a plain Java without any framework I want to now switch focus to other kinds of application so first I'm going to actually show you a Ruby application so it's a Sinatra application very simple all it basically does is it when it uh, when you visit its home page it responds by printing host and port uh, where the application is running so first of all let me see where am I targeting because I am targeting to micro cloud but I want to work with public cloud so let's say target api dot cloud foundry dot com so this is VMC is a tool command line tool that lets you work with your applications and services essentially the experience that you saw in STS and the VMC you will find that there is quite a bit of similarity they both are clients that lets you work with cloud so let's target to cloudform.com I can check apps by saying VMC apps um, this is the application I had deployed remember um, so now I'm going to deploy foo so for that all I have to do is VMC push foo um, let's create a foo webinar so first it asks if I would like to deploy from the current directory yes is this the right URL yeah let's assume it's available it detects that it's a Sinatra application so when we say we support Ruby we support either rails or Sinatra framework memory reservation it asks how much memory I want to reserve how many instances I want to start so I will start with one instance and then scale it up do I want to bind any service no because this application is very trivial it doesn't need any service but if I wanted to I could have so say no do I want to save this configuration so this is a new feature that we uh, just added called manifest and in this webinar I'm not going to go over this that either so I don't want to save it so it creates the application pushes it and starts the application so let me go to this take this URL And this is something is a public so you can you guys should be able to visit it so it's right now saying this is the host and port it's serving from but what if I start to see that there is quite a bit of demand and everybody is visiting this uh, this full application I mean it's internet you know any application can become suddenly successful so I want to scale it up so how do I do it I say VMC instances foo and let's say if I want to add two more instances so I say plus two so I will get total of three instances oh, not full full webinar and now it's three instances let's see um, first of all we can get information about those instances so they are running 
there are three instances running. What's the effect in the uh, if you go to here, you will see that the host and port are changing. So now suddenly I could scale to meet new demand by simply executing one command. Now let's say if I don't want that many instances, I can do minus two and I'm reducing instance to one. And if I now refresh it, you will see that host and ports, host and port never changes. Cool. So last demo is node application. So this is another framework we support. So this is a node application uh, that does chat. Let me push it the same way, VMC push chat webinar and push this application. Yes, it's a Node.js application, it detected it. One of the things we do is we look at your application code and based on that we determine what application what application is this? So it's fine. Memory reservation is good. How many instances? One is fine. I don't want to bind any service and I don't want to save any configuration. So now this is also publicly available URL. So let's go and to browser and try this. And if I want to join. All right, so Michael has joined, you have joined, so you can see that application is already working. All right, cool. So, well, I'm getting some positive feedback there, so that's good, thanks. <laughs> so this is, a, the whole point of this is, the bottom line is, if you have your application, pushing this application and making it run and making it scale is as easy as this. So I'm going to now uh, do some concluding slides and then open it uh, for question and answers. So the key takeaway is, this is a new era of computing. It's really a past era, which say platform as a service, that means you focus on your application and the infrastructure is left off to somebody. And even running the application, the platform part of it, the application uh, server, services, and making sure that they are running all the time is up to, left up to PaaS provider. We don't believe that existing PaaS solutions are complete, so Cloud Foundry aims to address it. And we address in two ways. One, we make it open. So open from point of view of extensibility, open from point of view of um, where you can deploy and open in terms of open source. So we make it open uh, through and through. Um, if you haven't already signed up, you can sign up now. You can get source code um, by going visiting the URL. And follow up on blog, so with the features that I did not show you, like Micro Cloud Foundry uh, related features, as well as uh, Manifest, you can follow the blog and get more information about it. With that, uh, thank you very much. And I think we open it for questions. And I already have some questions and uh, we'll address those. All right, thank you, Ram Vivas. That was an excellent demo. And we do have our, um, a question uh, queue in the chat window, and the first question we'd like to ask you to answer is about security. Um, how is the application protected? So each application is run in its own sandbox. So one application cannot see information about other application. Each application is sandboxed in a variety of ways. There are a couple of uh, options we have there. So application is secure from that point of view. For services, um, whenever you provision a service, you get uh, your, your own username and password specific to that service, and that is uh, exposed to application, but nothing else. And that's another way uh, application, your services are secure. Super, thank you, Ramiva. Now, just a reminder um, to everyone, please send your questions uh, into the chat window to all attendees. 
um, because the host is not answering them. Um, it's actually Charles Lee. So the next question is, um, can I access the data in my services with a GUI tool? That is the question. All right, it's a good question. And uh, had you asked this question a few months back, I'm sure we have been uh, we're working on it. But as it turns out, we already have a solution, and it's called Caldecott. It's a tunnel. Uh, it's actually a tunnel near Oakland, and we picked up that name from there. So what it does is it allows you to create a tunnel to your cloud service from your laptop. And you can read more about it on uh, blog.cloudform.com. And maybe in another webinar, we'll have demos of uh, Caldecott as well. But yes, answer is yes, you can access it. You can, through UI tool, you can create your schema, you can update your schema, you can take your backup of data, you can just um, seed with uh, additional data and so on. Okay, great, thanks Ramiva. Um, if the instances do not share data, how many, how do they share session state across the various instances? So, um, what we do is right now is we support sticky sessions. So once your application is, your client is bound to a particular instance of application, then it remains bound there until it goes away. And we are looking into other possibilities such as session replication and other things, but right now we feel that to create scalable architecture, if you start to have too, deep, too much dependency on session state, then it, it hampers your scalability. So sticky session is our current solution but please give us feedback and we can look into other possibilities. Thank you. Okay, how do we load balance in the case of scaling up? So what we have is, if you let's say if you got four application, uh, four application instances, and a client request comes up and assume let's say it's not a sticky, sticky session scenario, then we will pick up an instance for each of the services. So it will automatically, the router component will take care of it for you. So one of the things I want to be much more explicit about this question is, you don't have to worry about load balancing. So you write your application, you change your instances, and as you saw in my full demo, all I did is, you know, I was essentially uh, simulating multiple clients hitting by refreshing my browser, and it was going through a, a, one instance. So the scaling and automatic uh, load balancing is automatically done by a router component in Cloud Foundry. Super, thanks Rami Gus. Um, do you support, does Cloud Foundry support PHP? Uh, we, in cloudfoundry.com, we do not support PHP at this point, but we have community partners, AppFox specifically, that do have a solution, that do have a PHP support based on Cloud Foundry. And that brings up an interesting uh, uh, question is, or, or opportunity for partners to come on board and saying, okay, it is important that you support a particular platform or a service or a language, and community partners can work with us and we can have it uh, supported. And open source definitely helps uh, quite a bit in that direction as well. Okay, great, thanks Ramivas. Um, we'll continue to answer a few more questions in the chat window, but um, as a closing remark, this web session will be available to you. Um, as a follow-up, we're going to send an email, and the recorded session will be posted um, for you to review. Um, let's see. I think that's all, and uh, we appreciate your time, and um, please stand by on the, the WebEx session to answer some remaining questions. Thanks, everyone.